Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I wanna to discuss something that comes up in the comments to some of my videos, which is this saying that I have, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry. And it comes up in the response to how I, uh, how I project myself in some videos. So, so for instance, there's this one video that I did recently about getting a potential $15,000 fine where I was expl I said, you know, this is something that makes me angry and I was smiling while saying that. Or another was where I was talking about a senator that was supposed to meet with some people from repair.org, myself and some farmers that last minute canceled the meeting and then we find out on followthemoney.org that the AT&T lobbyist that lobbied against the bill paid that senator over $3,000. And one thing that people note is that oftentimes while I'm describing something that's somewhat aggravating, uh, that I have a smile on my face while I'm doing it, and that that's kind of weird. I wanted to explain the origin of that. So my dad has this saying, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry, and I'd rather laugh than cry. And he would point to someone that I'm not going to mention, not going to name names here, that we knew that regardless of what was going on, regardless of the day, 24-7, 365 for over 20 years, always found a reason to be miserable, always found a reason to explain why they couldn't accomplish something, why it wasn't worth trying, and why they had a genuine reason to be sad. And the thing that can trick you in these moments is that some of those reasons, they were actually, I mean, like some of them were BS, but some of them were reasonable. You know, you could look at it and go, okay, yeah, I mean, if that happened to me, I'd probably be depressed too. And the, but the problem was, you see it as a pattern, like every single day, there was a reason. There was always a reason. There was always a reason. And he would say, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be like that. And this person served as kind of an anti-role model for me of an example of what not to be like. So my dad had a lot of hardship and struggle in his life. He's had relationships where people ran up stupid amounts of debt and then put it in his name. He has uh, had to change careers in his mid-40s. Right after changing careers, he had to eat shit working at crappy entry-level jobs. Right after working the entry-level jobs and finally getting a good one at... Um, in a well-known, prestigious restaurant. He's first cook at this prestigious restaurant. Uh, he has to have a bunch of surgeries that don't allow him to have a job. And then there's other family personal issues that require that he take months off, so he's not able to have that job. When he finally gets a job somewhere else, he gets laid off from that one. When he finally gets another one, he has to have another set of surgeries, which have incredibly painful recoveries, like screws in the shoulder, knee replacements, all sorts of stuff that's just, it's not fun. And when he would find figure out the news of this, whether it was failing personal relationships, losing jobs, painful surgeries, painful recoveries, all different types of stuff, he would be sitting in the library with me and he would kind of laugh about it while telling, he would tell the story of it all, you know, kind of just tell the story and then just kind of start smiling and laughing. And I would ask, why, you know, why are you, why are you smiling? This, this is miserable. And he'd say, you know, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry. And then he would come up with his plan on how he was going to uh, just, you know, start over or just keep going through it. And he kind of saw life as a story. And it's a story that you get to continuously write and revise. And when you cry instead of laugh, you're kind of allowing someone else to write the story or you're allowing someone else to stop you from writing your story. But when you laugh and you step outside yourself, when you pretend that you're somebody else, you step outside and go, Damn. Okay, that's just ridiculous. It allows you to not be in that miserable mindset that stops you from writing your story. And this is something that I've uh, I've kind of taken in with my own life. We had this room called the library. It's a room that had all his books. It was a quiet room, and he had something called the thinking chair. Rather than punish me when I was a kid or spank me or hit me or take away my, you know, my ability to play games or say, you can't go outside this weekend. If I did something wrong, he would just say, go to the thinking chair. And, you know, would sit there for 10 minutes. He would come in. He would talk to me for 10 or 30 minutes about some life anecdote that I wouldn't understand until it eventually came back full circle to the thing I did wrong. And then I'd realize, oh, okay, so when I do this bad thing, it's not about me not getting to be able to ride my bike or play my Game Boy. It's because when I'm 45 years old, this will happen if I keep doing this. That will make me miserable. Now I get it. So he had this room, and that was a room where we would talk about these things. And at the end of it, we, you know, he would just say, okay, you want to play, play a game of Crash Bash? He'd smile. We'd go downstairs. We'd play a game of Crash Bash on PlayStation. I would kick his ass because, I mean, let's just face it, I'm better at it. <laughs> and, uh, that would be, and that would be that. And the thing that... that, that this did is it helped me a lot in my own life when I would run into these things that were absolutely miserable. So for instance, you know, like living in an apartment because I'm so broke that I, uh, you know, putting my money into the business that I can't afford to live someplace more than 400 a month that has a bunch of termites. So every single day I'm trying to find a part of the house that isn't infested with termites that I don't have crap crawling all over me or whatever while I'm sleeping. Uh, that, that sucked. Or when I, you know, when there was the 
Well, there's so many different things. So there was this one time that, I, that uh, you know, someone who was putting a patch on my website did change. Authorize and capture to authorize, which is something that doesn't happen when you patch Magento. Someone has to go to that drop-down menu and do it. They did that, and then the site just didn't collect 30000 bucks. That sucked. Or the time that I, what, let's say, I don't know, went to move, and uh, a contractor, you know, they couldn't find a contractor to do a basic job, uh, or a friend, a mentor referred me to someone else that was wound up literally be, being somebody that seemingly burned their house down the day that they were declined bankruptcy protections for the last job where someone sued them and got a judgment because they screwed them over. And then right after that is all done. I move into this new expensive place right as the world economy goes to shit and New York City shuts down. There's, uh, there's all sorts of stuff where this can happen. Or, you know, let's say you have a laptop repair shop and you get um, a ridiculous asinine fine for not having a record of a device you never purchased from a customer, in spite of the fact that this is a business that doesn't purchase devices from customers and is very, very upfront about its disdain for this practice of doing password unlocking for devices that you know are effing stolen. I've, this is something I've looked down on for like five to six years. I have old videos that I did, mainly they're horribly poor production quality. I think I was kind of semi-buzzed and when, when I did that video, but you get the point. That stuff's frustrating. Or another one recently of the don't, you know, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry thing. So there are certain, this is something I discuss on my community page. There are certain insurances that you need to have as a business. And I have one and I have it on auto pay. The premium changed. And this isn't like auto pay with your cell phone or your credit card or your ISP, where if you upgrade your plan or something changes, or you spend in a different amount this month, the auto pay just takes the amount that it's supposed to. This is the type of auto pay where when something changes, the auto pay stays the same. They don't tell you that you should change the auto pay. They don't suggest that the auto pay be changed. They don't tell you that it's not linked to the, to the account in this way and then it underpays the bill. So I received a notice that my policy was subject to a cancellation. Now, I check this once every two to four weeks because I've had this crap happen before with another shitty New York insurance company. I'm prepared. So what I did, I, I checked this thing like, in, like, uh, in a very paranoid fashion, usually once about every two weeks or so, sometimes once every month, usually once every two weeks. And I see it, and I'm like, nah, uh, uh I paid it manually. I get a letter that says that my policy was never canceled, my policy remains in effect, and they apologized to me for what happened. Now, after this happens, two months later, I get a letter from the state of New York saying that, our, that my insurance company informed the state of New York that I had no insurance for two months and that my policy was canceled. This is a department that finds you something around $2,000 a week for each week that you operate without this type of insurance. And I have this letter sitting right here that says that for the entire time I was insured. And the only reason there was any question about it is because their own effing auto pay doesn't work properly. This is, the again, right after one fine that I could potentially be on the hook for 15 k for, unless I plead guilty and settle at 500 I get another one because my insurance company is dumb. So I open the letter up and I'm reading this whole thing and I'm laughing. This is funny to me because what I do is I step outside of myself and I look at this as if I'm, in, I'm just some guy on YouTube commenting. And it's funny. It is. Look at how incompetent this entire, whether it's the state, the insurance company, or the entire system is. And the fact that that happens right after the, the other thing happened, I mean, it's funny. So I laugh. And the laughing allows me to deal with it without going insane. Or maybe it's a sign that I'm going insane. But at least I'm positive while I'm doing it. But one of the things that gets asked in one of my other videos is when someone said, you know, like you said, you know, right as you say you're angry right now, you're smiling and laughing, what's up with that? Is that the, the laughing allows me to continue writing my story. Anytime stuff like this happens in life, I embrace it as part of the story. I laugh. I take it in as part of the, because it's kind of like a movie or a television show of some sort. And then I make my plan and then I just keep it moving. The only time that you, re that you genuinely lose when you're doing this is when you actually let it get to you, when you cry, when you sit there and you're like, first this happens. Of course the economy would go bad right after I move. That's my luck. Of course that my friend would refer me to someone who winds up being a scammer. I can't choose friends. I guess I shouldn't trust any of them. Of course the city's going to try to find me again. Of course my insurance company is going to screw me. Of course they are. That's just the way it is. I guess you should just go back to Modell Sporting Goods. I guess it's just not meant to be for you. Like, once you, if you do that, you're truly fucked. Whereas if you go, 
this place is filled with termites. And this is the best that I can afford right now. <laughs> and you just laugh at how silly it is. You find one room in the, in the house that's not filled with termites, and you sleep there until you save up for your parts and your ultrasonic cleaner and you move on. Then you win. If when you go, of course I, I hired the web designer that clicked the wrong thing in a drop down and changed my site's payment method when that was not part of the scope of the job so that I lost 30K. Yep, all right, time to start over. And you laugh, you'll actually start fresh. I did have to start fresh. I had to start over after several years of work at that point. Just plow through and do it. And one thing that I've noticed is that there are lots of people that are way smarter than me, way more creative than me, have way more ingenuity than me, can pay attention better than me. Uh, I don't know if I already mentioned more creative, more creative, smarter, all that stuff, harder working that didn't get as far. Because when these things happen to them or when many more worse horrible things happen to them, it's, they just start to, damn, damn. Instead of kind of embracing it as part of their life story. And then they stop writing the story. They let the external circumstance stop them from finishing writing the story. And the thing that my dad taught me with this, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry, is that this was his mechanism of ensuring that he never stopped writing a story. He kept writing a story and he's happier because of it. And this is something that's helped me immensely in my own life. There are many things that I don't talk about on this channel with regards to my business or personal, in spite of all the things I do, that are way, way, way worse than this. And, you know, several years later, I keep a journal and I look at my videos and I think, damn, I really thought that, that would be the end. And it wasn't. And then a few years pass and things get better and better and better. Because it's really easy for your brain to convince you that it's over when it's not actually over or even close to it. So this is, just, this, this is kind of my coping mechanism for it. And the reason I make this video is because there's this misconception that when I, I when, you know, like I said, yeah, a senator gets 3,000 bucks and ignores a meeting with us and I talk about it like this and the senator got this and rah, that I'm uh, this miserable, horribly negative person that hates life all the time. It's literally the exact opposite. When you see me, you know, whether you see, when you see me animated or angry or aggravated at something, but I'm smiling and I have this like grin on my face as I'm doing it, never mistake that for negativity or misery. That's my way of laughing instead of crying, and that is the thing that allows me to uh, propel myself into all of the challenges that life tosses at me while coming out ahead in the long run several years later. It's what allows me to prepare myself to roll up my sleeves and crawl through the Shawshank Redemption sewer of shit as, the, as life tosses at me Shawshank Redemption sewers of shit. It works. So when you, w w if you see me talking about an issue, whether it's a right to repair issue, an economic thing, whatever it is, and you see me like, you know, going, ah, ah, ain't, never mistake that for misery. Never mistake that for negativity. Never mistake that for uh, wanting to give up. Because at the end of the day, the thing that my dad told me has always stuck with me. If I didn't laugh, I'd cry. And it's what allows me when every all the shit is hitting the fan and everything is falling apart to step back, laugh at it all, make a plan, and then just keep it moving. That's the way I live my life. Open up an envelope with ridiculous crap, laugh, keep living my life, keep living my life, keep living my life. When, and when the, once enough time has passed, that all those problems are in the rearview mirror, what I find time and time again is that the worst horrible stuff that I thought would be the absolute end of the, uh, of the potential to have a happy life for Lewis Rossman, they were all just jokes. And they deserve to be laughed at when I think about it. And, and after moving forward, I really thought that would be the thing that ended me. Ha. I really thought that would be what kept me from having a good life. Yeah, right. Just something to think about. Um, I... I yeah, I, I appreciate my dad for instilling this in me. And I really appreciate him for what, what he did with, uh, with how I grew up, where instead of punishing me and, you know, spanking me or saying, kids need discipline, they need this, you know, belt, whip, uh, beat, you know, all this kind of uh, stupid crap, I'm taking away your Game Boy, I'm taking away your computer, you can't go out this weekend. You just have a thinking chair. I want you to sit and think about these two things or these three things. Then 15 or 20 minutes later, He'd come into the room, and he would have some half-hour-long story. Some, sometimes it would be almost an hour-long story. And it would just be something that I, I, I wouldn't understand it. But then at the end of it, the point would come around. And it would be something about how the way I was acting or the personality trait I was demonstrating or the choice that I made, how he had made a similar choice at some point, and how it wound up ruining a relationship, ruining a job opportunity, or get, getting him into a fight or something. There was something that was bad. 
so that I understood not just that this is a rule that I should follow, but the why of why I should follow that rule. And, you know, there were other parents and other people that said, that's ridiculous. You know, you have to punish kids. Yeah, you know, you have to you know, spank them a good spanking if they do something wrong. I, I don't know. I think it came out pretty well. Like I, I've spent the last 14 years uh, doing a, a lot of work. I, I uh, you know, I don't, I don't just go out and like drink the whole day and get fired from my job and get in trouble with the law all the time. I pretty much just, you know, work, go gym, talk with friends every now and then, go home and uh, rinse, repeat. I appreciate it. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Just a thought.